difference in your preaching. Absolutely. They, they, mm. Even though I never mentioned Didn't that say anything, right? Phil Driscoll came in, in in the early days, and he's, he just walked up to me and said, you've got the gift of tongues. I said, yes, I do. He said, right now, he said, just live it and let it flow and watch what God does in the church. Mm. And that's how our church splintered, but it never split. Mm -hmm. Because gradually, somebody would want to quit, and their child would need healing. <laughs> <laughs> Glory they, to God. They'd call and their child would get healed, then the Holy Ghost would hit them, you know. So, I mean, it, God just, there were people that left. Yeah, yeah. But, but God had put such a deep hunger in me that I didn't care if I fell out, stood up. Mm -hmm. I got to that point where I had to have God. Mm. Mm -hmm. And thank God I'm still that way. I don't want to do this without the Holy Ghost. Yes, it's yes, just not worth God. it. Yes, yes. But he, he's revolution. He, he kicked the door open for the kingdom for me, revolutionized mm -hmm. my life, broke every chain, mm. and, and, is, and is still teaching me how to do what this man's doing. And that's release that anointing that breaks every yes. yoke in people's lives. Ron, why do you think, um, and I think there's different answers to this, but why do you think <sighs> that people in a congregation and there's thousands and thousands, for example, let's just use the Southern Baptist or the Baptist. Thousands of pastors have received the baptism. Yes. In fact, it's getting so huge now that it's, yep. it's like a tidal wave. That's right. All right. But yet when they tell their people, is it because people have been taught a certain thing That's and, right. they, and they don't want to be taught, well, they don't want to be, they don't want to feel like, well, we were shortchanged. That's right. Or maybe we didn't believe it all the way. And it's, is it more pride, is it more pride than anything that fear, keeps people? Two things, fear. <laughs> And pride, mm -hmm. and they go together. In Where this. does the fear come in? The the fear of of losing their position, especially among the leadership. Mm. I've been with the boys all these years, and and listen, that's very valid. When I confidentially told a leader in Southern Baptist that I had the Holy Spirit and was speaking in tongues privately, I'd never gone public, uh, because the Spirit of God was just letting it manifest as mm -hmm. He wanted to. He immediately sent out uh, thousands of emails around the nation. Uh, uh, like I, like lo almost like I was a homosexual coming out of the closet, like it was something to be embarrassed about. Wow! But he sent out just, and that's when I wrote my book and just t came out of the closet. Yeah. And <laughs> said, "This is what's happened." Thank you you wrote the awakening. The, is that yeah. right about the Holy Spirit? Yeah. 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 The, the book uh, "Awakened by the Spirit." Awakened by the Spirit, right? Uh, that thing, I tell you, the, the what happened was, I, most of my friends, with the exception of one or two, I'm talking about dozens. I'd fought in the battle for the Bible with Baptists. I'd been chairman of the Home Mission Board. Right. I'd been president of the Tennessee Baptist Convention. Except for maybe three or four, they cut me off immediately. And so fear of losing favor and position on leadership. And, but I can see that. I and, can but, see but, where some people, people that would... Yeah, mm -hmm. on people, it's pride. Mm. What he said, and I'm, it's still wow. rocking in my spirit, you've got to take up that cross and identify... You know, that was a shameful thing in Jesus' day. They only crucified. Mm -hmm. uh, see, it's still rocking in my spirit, that word he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, you can't, you've got to die to self. And if God wants you to speak in tongues, you better get started. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, you better mm -hmm. get started. I'm telling you, what he wants to do is more important than our pride, our education, our denomination, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and, and so forth. So I'm just begging people right now. Praise you, the Lord. If you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you need to cry out to God. Luke said, how much more will he give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Yes. But you've yes. got to ask. And it, yes. when he put, comes on you, you've got to open your mouth and speak. And let him, He's not going to yeah. jerk you around. This really started in the Old Testament when Samuel anointed Saul king over Israel. Yeah, yeah. that's he right. He became another, another man. man. Another Ooh. man, that's what it says. And yeah. prophesied. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had an utterance. Yeah. That's God. right. In the Old Testament, yeah. when men received a Glory. manifestation of the Spirit of God, mm. they had an utterance. They prophesied. <laughs> With the last year that I was pastor at North Cleveland Church, I put an ad in the paper, a full-page ad in the paper. It was on Pentecost Sunday. I said, I'm preaching on charismatic renewal. I'm preaching on classical Pentecostals and other such terms to get as much attention as I mm -hmm. could. And I really got the attention. The <laughs> place was packed and jammed, people standing around the walls. And I stood up to preach and had only been preaching maybe five minutes. A young man, a deacon in the Baptist church had mm -hmm. come from Athens, Tennessee to North Cleveland to see what in the world charismatic uh, phenomenon was, mm -hmm. 
and I had been preaching that short few moments, he stood up and he said, Brother Lowry, if you would hush for a few moments, <laughs> few moments I believe I could receive yeah, that wonderful have. gift you're talking about. You I said, come on, that's why we're here. That dignified Baptist deacon ran all the way <laughs> out from the front. He was sitting on the back row, and when he came, it was so amazing to me. Forty-nine other people what? came with him. And Followed he stood him. there, and I laid hands on him <laughs> rather right. generously. Yeah. And he <laughs> shook under the power and started speaking in other <laughs> tongues. <laughs> and when he started speaking in tongues, all yeah. 49 yeah. of us, <laughs> that was 50 people in that <laughs> filled with the Holy Spirit my, my, my. in that Hallelujah. experience. Well, for the folks who are watching, let me say just about two minutes of my te three minutes of my testimony here. When I was 11 years of age at a youth camp in Roanoke, Virginia, in the old tabernacle, you, you've preached. That's where I first yeah. saw Brother Lowry, by the way, when I was 11 years of age. Um, God baptized me in the Holy Spirit, and it's kind of funny what you said, because they would say, hang on, let go, and, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, you're saying, okay, what am I supposed to do here? But the Lord was gracious and merciful, and He baptized me in the Holy Spirit. And oddly enough, from the time I was 11 to 16, I didn't pray in, I didn't pray in the Spirit much. You know, it's just, uh, maybe it was your youth, or you didn't think about it, or you weren't involved in the depth of the church services. But when I was called to preach, one of the things that happened to me, and our partners know this story, and people where we've preached have heard me tell this from time to time. There was a man that my father, it was my father's uncle named Rufus Dunford. Rufus Dunford had a brain tumor, and uh, they sent him to John Hopkins, John Hopkins Hospital in the 1930s, they told him if they operated, he could be a vegetable or die. So he went back home to War, West Virginia to die, actually, uh, uh, this, with this tumor. Uh, after three days of not being able to eat, he was actually kind of fasting and not eating at the same time. The power of God came on him while he was getting some potatoes for his wife that was cooking dinner that afternoon. They were, we, they were in the potato patch. He was. And a wind came from heaven and knocked him on his feet. Now, this guy, P Pastor, this man could not even read. He had a third grade education. God baptized him in the Holy Spirit. He began to speak with tongues, and he began to quote from the Bible. My God. Now, the reason they know he did it is his wife saw him laying in the dirt and thought that the tumor had ruptured and something had happened. She goes out there. He's praying in tongues, and he's quoting Mark 16. Hello. Uh, he's yeah. quoting it. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, can't yeah. read. These signs will follow your ministry. You're speaking with new tongues. You shall lay hands on the sick. That man had a gift of being able to go up to people of any language. Now, he just couldn't just go up. He had to feel lit. He, had, he would have to have the leading of the Spirit. He could talk. My dad saw him talk to seven different nationalities and communicate about Jesus and witness to them mm, about Jesus hallelujah. in their language. He did it to Greeks, to people from Yugoslavia. To, uh, he could speak Latin, Greek, German. He could speak uh, Russian. Parts, you know, different, different languages, in other words. Daddy, dad, my daddy knows all of them. I'll, I'll miss them if I start trying to go into the details of the number of languages. When I was... 18 years of age, the Lord spoke to me to go have Rufus lay hands on me and transfer his anointing. No one knew he would die three months later. And when I walked in there, I've got to tell this story real quick. I walked in there and spent some time, and I, I didn't tell him why I was there. I said, I want you to pray for me. Well, he laid hands on me and started praying, and I felt liquid fire on. Mm. I can't describe it. Come from my head Same to my feet. God, yeah. He started praying in other tongues, and he stopped and looked at me. He said, what language is the Spirit of God praying in? I said, I don't know. And he started rebuking me. He said, you better learn when you pray in the Spirit to know the language. The Holy Spirit, spe he's speaking Latin. Well, he knew. Yeah. He would never studied it, but he knew. Then he did it again. And he prayed for me in tongues. And he said, what did the Spirit say? And I said, God, you better tell me something because the prophet's going to kill me if you don't give me a word. <laughs> and I said, you're praying that God will give, you, give me your anointing when you die. He said, that's it. Now, I was never so glad to hear from yeah. God in my life because this guy scared me. You know, this is the real deal right here. Yeah. And do you know, he died three months later, and right after that, Ron, we saw the very first healing miracle. We start having manifestations of foreigners in our church services that would understand the language we were praying in the Spirit. And our ministry was bumped up from just an evangelistic ministry to a ministry of seeing many people saved. Now, we've had revivals in the past. You were, in fact, Daisy, Tennessee, you remember yeah, that one? I wanted to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, I got about a minute, a minute and a half. Tell us about Daisy. Well, in, That in, was 81. Uh, yeah, in 81, I'd been, in, I'd, I was 33 years old. I'd been at uh, Central Baptist Night Abbott's house for two years. Yeah. And we'd had a lot of young people saved. And I can't tell you how many uh, were touched by the Holy Spirit in that meeting. And the kids begged me to come to that meeting. Yeah. And I, I could have I, I had eight years earlier if I hadn't have been afraid. Yeah. 
but the first man I brought in after I was